Hi, it's Stephen here at Class Act, and what I'm about to do is an experiment. I'm going to do an art journal page or two, and I'm going to use the equipment that we have set up in the starter kit for those of you that are going to be taking the course. I have no idea how this is going to work out, but I'm going to use all the materials that we put into the starter kit. And just a review of that, I'm going to start with my Delusions journal. I have it right here and you notice I have some wax paper here as well. Uh, the wax paper is just to keep whatever I spread on here from going on to my other pages in the book. It's just a protection device. Um, I'm going to use a water brush. I'm going to use uh, a distress sprayer. I'm going to use watercolor paints, um, gesso, gel medium, uh, I'm going to have my brushes, my palette knife, uh, I'm going to have a Sharpie fine point, actually I'm using a different brand but it's the same diff, and I'm going to use some watercolor pencils, and I'm going to use some watercolor crayons, and I have no idea what this is going to look like or what I'm going to create, and that's really the mystery and the fun of this whole process. Periodically I will have to pause the video, but you probably won't notice that because I'll just splice it all together. Um, because I'm going to have to let things dry, and that's where a heat gun comes in uh, very nicely with this. So, let's get started. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to gesso my pages. Now, what is gesso? Gesso is basically a white primer paint that has a little bit of, um, well, they call it grounds in it, and it just prepares the surface. Now, in the Art Delusions, uh, sorry, the art journal that you're getting in your kit. This is really designed to work with or without gesso. But for the sake of the video, I'm going to spread some of this on. Gesso comes in your kit, and gesso is very, very common. It's very easy to get. We can get lots of it here at the store. Um, it, but it's a really nice product. And later on, as we progress through our exploration of art journals in future classes, I'm going to show you how to do more than just coat a page with gesso. So. We're going to start with this, if I can get my lid off. Okay, M don't mind the noise. Ah, there we go, just cracking the seal on here. They do kind of dry out a little bit. And I'm just taking a paintbrush, it doesn't matter what kind you use, and I'm just going to apply it. It doesn't need to be very thick. You're just trying to get a base coat down which will keep, as I said before, the paints or the watercolor crayons or whatever you're using from soaking into the paper. It keeps it more up onto the surface, keeps your colors a little bit more brilliant. And you can see now why I have the wax paper down here, because I am a bit on the messy side. And we'll do the other page over here. Oops. And as I said, I'm not putting it on very thick for two reasons. One, it doesn't need to be on very thick. It's just coating the surface and this being the type of art journal that it is, it uh, has very thick paper in it so the paper itself does not absorb. It looks like it's kind of co coated with something. And also it dries much more quickly when you don't put it on as thick. Okay. Now, I would immediately go and wash my brush out after this, but for the sake of the video, I've just got a cup of water here off to the side, and I'm just going to put my brush in there and let it, let it soak. I'll wash it up later. Uh, gesso washes out with soap and water. It's a water-soluble uh, material. And now I'm going to take my heat gun, and I'm going to apply a little heat to this to get this dry. So this is going to take a couple of minutes. It doesn't take that long, but I'm going to just pause the video at this point and I'll be back. Okay, my pages are all primed now with the gesso and it's all nice and dry. And that only took a couple of minutes with the heat gun because I said I put it on fairly thin. You don't need to put it on heavy. And this just acts as a nice coating here to keep our mediums from absorbing into the paper keeping everything up on top. So, one of the things that's in your kit are, is a set of watercolors. It's not this particular set, but it watercolors are watercolors. I'm sure some artists would disagree with me, but for us doing art journaling, 
These are not major works of art. They're for our own personal self. So whatever you have will work. And this is a little palette set, which is really easy to work with. You can buy watercolors in tubes as well. Um, and they come in various grades. But this was a cheap set that I bought somewhere. And I wanted, I want to just get them wet right now so I can work with them. Um, I could dip my brush into some water and just go along like that. But what I like to do is just them a spritz with my spray gun. And this is going to come in handy for other things, as you'll see. So it's a really good idea to have one of these. And there is one in your kit. So I'm just going to spritz them up here. Get them nice and juicy. And because I like blue, I'm going to start with some blue. And I'm just going to slap some blue down. I do not have any rhyme or reason as to where the color is going. And I am working on two pages at the same time. I like to work on two pages. It gives me a little bit more surface area. And if the paints start to dry out, just add a little water. Get them sloppy again. And maybe I'm going to add a little purple in here. Now, if you know anything about color theory, you could pick complementary colors on the color wheel, that kind of thing. Um, sometimes I do. Sometimes I check out the color wheel. But right now, all I'm doing is I'm just interested in laying down some color creating some background to work with. When you're doing art journaling and mixed media work, one of the features of this is the fact that everything's done in layers. And since this is my first layer, I'm not being that particular as to what's happening with it. Notice my brush strokes are going all over the place. So I really don't know how this is going to turn out. If this turns out not that great, you'll never see this video. But you know, that's the fun. You never know how things are going to turn out. I'm going to use a little bit more blue in here. Okay. That some watercolor to it. Now, I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to wipe around with this while it's still wet. You can do this with a paper towel, or rag, or whatever. I use a simple baby wipe, an unscented baby wipe. And I'm just going to kind of blend the colors using the baby wipe. And you see what I'm doing is I'm kind of getting rid of my brush stroke marks a little bit. And it is kind of uh, washing this out a little bit, and that's okay. I don't mind that because I'm going to have other things on top of this. That's looking not too bad at all. So, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to dry it. Again, hit it with the heat gun. And because I didn't put this on very heavily, again, it's going to dry very, very quickly. In fact, I think I'll just let you watch the drying process here without me pausing the video. By the way, this particular heat gun I really like. It's by Tim Holtz, of course, by Ranger. And uh, what I like about it is that it's not very loud. And it's got a fairly wide opening to it, so you get a maximum surface coverage with it. But any heat gun you've got will do. Also, lift it up occasionally off your wax paper because it will your pages will stick. There, that's all there is to that. That's nice and dry. Now, I think I want to add some more color to this, but instead of adding the watercolor, I'm going to use another one of our products and that you have in your kit, and that's watercolor crayons. These are crayons that are water-soluble. 
Now, they come in all kinds of different brands. doesn't matter what brand you're using. And they can get very expensive, depending on what you, you want. Um, they can range anywhere from, you know, five, six, seven dollars, right up to like 50 bucks. Um, I'm using what are called Neon. They are actually a better brand. They are fairly expensive, but I like them the best because they're very creamy. And I'm just going to pick a couple of colors. Uh, let's see. May I add a little yellow into this too? Let's try a couple of colors to start with. And all you do is scribble. Because these are water soluble, I'm going to use my paint my water brush next. I could use a paint brush though in water to kind of blend the colors through. So we've laid down some color. Let's see what happens. I'm going to get out my water brush. And where did I put my water brush? Right there. Now, water brushes come in a variety of different styles. The whole idea of a water brush is it has a chamber that holds water, and it's got a brush on the end. And you just give it a little squeeze, and water starts to run through it. And you can use it like a paintbrush without having to dip it into your water all the time. And you can see what's happening here. And I'm just going to let it mix these colors. See how creamy these watercolor crayons are? And I'm just adding a little bit of texture to my page. Just more of these swirly things. So let's see, I'm starting to get sort of a, a little marbled effect here. So I think what I'll do is let's just keep going around in circles. This is also why the gesso is a good idea on your pages because, because we're working with paper over and over again, um, depending on your journal, depending on the paper they've used, the paper can start to pill. So the gesso avoids that problem. Okay, that's not looking too bad, so I'll just leave that. And let's do the same over on this side. See how nice a water brush? I don't have to constantly keep dipping it back into my water. Your kit has a water brush. Um, they usually come in s several different widths. I'm using sort of a medium nib on this one. You can get a fine detailer, which is great if you want to do some painting, especially if you want to paint inside like a rubber stamped image or something like that, or you want to do some writing. Uh, the detailer one is finer tipped, and it's good for that. But when you're covering large surfaces like this, you want a little wider tip. Now, I could have used actually the one that's a little bigger than this one, but I just happened to grab the first one that was in my pot. It's kind of like finger painting, except without my fingers. I'm just going to leave that as it is. Now the thing about cleaning out your water brush, very easy. Just take a baby wipe or scrap piece of paper and just wipe the thing, squeeze a little water through it until it marks clear. Now it may stain a little bit on the bristles depending on the medium you've been using it in and that's okay. It won't transfer the color. And this one has a cap so I'll put that back on. Okay, we're going to give this another little bit of a dry.
Okay, that's pretty good. Now, if any of the water pools anywhere on it, you can just take a um, paper towel and just suck, soak that up if you wish. And now, I want to add a little texture to this. So, I think I'm going to pause the video at this point because I want to get some rubber stamps to create texture. Okay, I want to add a little texture to this page now. So I'm going to my rubber stamps for this. Now, you do not have rubber stamps in your kit, mainly because I'm sure you have lots of rubber stamps at home. And I like to use stamps that have patterns on them for background texture. The two stamps I'm using today are actually from the Class Act line of mixed media stamps. Uh, this one, I believe, is paved stone, and this one is stripes. Um, stripes or ribbons, they call it. Not sure which. Now, because we're putting things down on primarily a water-based medium, we don't want to use a water-based medium with our rubber stamps because when we add more layers on top of this, they're just going to smear. So you need a waterproof ink. And of course, the best one is stays on. But you could use Momentum and you could use Ranger's Archival inks for this as well. And you're just going to stamp up Get your rubber stamp all inky. And you know, this is not going to be perfect stamping here. We're not interested in perfect stamping. It's just whatever comes up. So now it's not giving me a very deep impression, but that's okay. This ink pad may not be as juicy as I thought. That's a little better. Okay, we'll switch. I think I'm going to switch ink pads because my stays on doesn't seem to be that juicy. So I'm going to just go to another waterproof one, and that's uh, Archival by uh, Ranger, just the Jet Black. And I'm going to switch my stamps here. Ooh, that's a lot better. Okay. But I'm not worried about the fact that the other ones were a bit fainter. That's not going to upset me. There's one that's a little fainter too. And go off the page so that the eye travels around. And you notice I really don't have any rhyme or reason to where I'm setting these stamps down. And I don't know, I read this once, you should always use odd numbers. I um, have no idea what that theory is behind that, but let's go back to this one. Now, of course, you could do these in color, too. You don't have to do them in black. I just happen to be doing them in black because black was handy. to do off that one. Uh, off the side there, off the side there. Yeah, let's do a faint one up here. And all this is doing is adding texture and I'm just sort of stamping off my stamp right now. Okay. So we've done that. Give these a quick wipe. I am infamous for not cleaning off my rubber stamps. And if you are particular about your colors getting blended because there's residue from another one, then you do want to clean them off. I do and I don't. It depends. Okay. So, what is next? All right. Well, I'm going to give this a little bit of a heat set. Even though these inks are waterproof, 
I still like to apply a little bit of heat on them because they are going on top of other layers which somewhat retards the drying process so this just sets them a little bit better okay so now I'm thinking more how do we get some more interest on this page we have this background but it's still like it's just a background so one of the techniques you can use and this is where we're going to be using our matte medium gel or gel matte medium however you want to say it this is acts like a glue it's it's like a sealer um it's somewhat like Mod Podge in that you can use it to glue down things and then you seal put um, another coating over over the top to uh, protect it and uh, I'm going to seal down some tissue I've got some Tim Holtz tissue here you could use any kind of printed tissue um, you could use gift wrap whatever gift wrap type tissue I, I'm just using this because I have it I keep forgetting I have it and um, I'm just going to rip up pieces of it and decide where they're going to go wondering here if I need okay we'll start with that and see what happens all right so when you use the gel matte medium you'll need a brush that's what I'm getting off camera here let's move some of these things out of my way okay so it's just a white pasty thing I'm just going to put it down fairly generous into the area where I'm going to stick this next piece down now you notice you may pick up a little bit of color on your brush from the background um, because remember that's water soluble so I hit hit it with something that's wet it's going to come up and then you're going to go over top and you're really going to work this in because tissue is translucent so you want to see the pattern coming up underneath it so the more of this you work in I'm pressing fairly hard with my brush getting that right into the page and we've got a piece for down here over here so we'll really gloop the stuff on that's a word glooping you can see it's really blending in right into the background piece that went over the binding but that's okay as I told you there aren't any mistakes it's just whatever happens okay so 
I wonder if I need a little bit more. I think I need another little piece up in here. So I'm just going to grab another piece. I think I'm just going to put it right there. Okay, so I'm just going to put my brush in water for now until I can get around to cleaning it out because that stuff is like a glue. You don't want it to dry on your brush or you ruin your brush. Some people keep a separate brush for this. I don't. I use all mine. I've got this amazing stuff for cleaning brushes. It's sort of a soap and uh, I'll tell you about that another time. But right now we're going to hit it with the heat dry again. Now, the one thing about matte medium is that it, when it dries, it dries absolutely clear, but with water-soluble products like watercolor uh, crayons or watercolor paint, it will act as a bit of a resist. Sometimes. Um, I have found that that's not always the rule. Um, there are exceptions. but it will start to resist. So we're going to see here exactly how much of a resist this is created once I have this all dry. You want to make sure it's very dry because you don't want any of this peeling back up. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pause the video again and then I'll come back with the next thing I'm going to do. Okay, so now I have my pages really dry. That took a little longer. That took about five or six minutes, but I want to make sure that this is all very dry. I'm still not really particularly happy with the background. I think it needs something more. And I do like script. And since I've used some uh, tissue paper that has some script on it, I thought I'd enhance that by using this rubber stamp from Hero Arts um, with some more stays on ink. Stays on ink actually does come in different colors. This is the claret. I don't know how it's going to work out, but I'm going to give it a try. So just rubbing it all over my stamp. Saw a video where this lady was uh, doing her rubber stamps and uh, for her journals, and she kept saying, do rub, 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 tap, tap, tap. And I don't know, somewhere along the line, I heard you shouldn't rub your rubber stamps onto, or your ink pads on your rubber stamp. But, you know, I don't know, if you're careful, it doesn't really wear out your pad. So, I'm rub rubbing and stamp stamp. So, now I'm just going to lay this down. I think I start in this corner. And I'm going to give it a good press, because I've got quite a bit of stuff here. And as I said, I'm not sure if this gel matte medium will act as a resist. It shouldn't with stays on ink. Oh yeah, I'm liking that. I don't know if you can see that or not, but that's giving me some texture. Um, and that's what I wanted. So rub, rub, tap, tap. I like to hold it down for a few seconds, let it get absorbed into my background. Oh yeah, I'm liking that. I'm liking that a lot. The size of the stamp is a good size for this because it gives me good coverage. It basically does a quarter of a page in one stamp. Okay, I'm going to pause the video here because I'm going to do this over both pages, the whole thing. Okay, now everything is nice and thoroughly dry on here and heat set. Now I'm thinking I should do something that's a little bit finer in detail. I like to start very general to create the backgrounds and work my way up to the finer detail. So. I'm going to go to stencils this time. Now, in your starter kit, you did not get stencils because everybody's got tons of stencils. And if you're like me, I've been collecting them, so I've probably got over 200 different stencils. These two are a couple of my favorite because they're very artsy.
Now, one is the face of this lady, and the other are these three figures that are in uh, progressive sizes along the way. So I'm going to do a little experiment here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put down the stencil, and I want to hold it in place for this technique. So I'm going to take a little bit of repositionable tape, or you could use washi tape, whatever grabs you. And I'm just going to put a few pieces on here just to hold my stencil down. And using repositionable tape, uh, or use artist's masking tape or painter's tape for that matter, just keeps it from pulling up the background when I um, lift it up. And I'm going to take another textured stamp, and this is another one we have at the store from our mixed media collection, these dots. And I'm going to ink it up. Again, I'm using an archival ink, a waterproof ink. And let me put this down. Do the old rub rub and tap tap. And I'm going to get it fairly loaded up because I'm going on top of a lot of different layers here. And I'm going to stamp over my stencil and see what happens. And I'm going to re-ink each time. Stencils are great because you can use paint on them, you can use your inks on them, you can use your uh, watercolor crayons or your pencils, whatever. This is just another method for filling in your stencil. Okay, let's do the big reveal and see what happened. Not a whole lot. Might be the type of stencil I used, might not be. Hmm. That doesn't impress me, but it doesn't bother me either because I've got some texture. Okay, it might be this stencil. This stencil just may not be the right type for this. So, I'm going to try the same technique with this one because there's more open space on this particular stencil. And we'll see what happens with this. So, I'm just going to get it secured. I'm just going to concentrate on these three figures here. And I'm going to use the same rubber stamp. So we'll see what happens with this. It may also be that I've made my background so busy that these aren't going to show up that clearly. I don't know. It's an experiment. I have no idea what's going to happen. And that's the fun. That's the fun. As I said, you can't make any mistakes. See, as you're doing this in layers, you can always build on anything. I'm going to do something different with that page over there. Not sure yet. So I do this, I'm thinking. Now, I have to confess that I have done this technique on other pages before, and it worked very well, but the background was different. And as I said, my background may be too busy for this particular technique. But nothing ventured, nothing gained. And I just had a thought. When I reveal this, and if it doesn't look that clear, if I take my black marker and go around the outline, it may make it stand out a little bit better. So let's just see here. I'm just going to peel off back of it just a little bit so I can line it back up again. Yeah, okay, that's blending into the background, not really seeing it. So I'm going to try what I just suggested. Make sure to get that back in the right state. Okay, I'm going to take my marker and I'm just going to outline and see what happens.
This is why you want a Sharpie style marker because um, some markers just will not work on top of. It's like using the stays on ink or water soluble, or not a water soluble, a water permanent. Waterproof is the word I would like. Uh, ink pad. Because as I said, certain products, like the gel, will act as a resist, which means anything that has a water base to it is just going to wipe right off and beat up. It's not going to be permanent. Now the pen I'm using is actually from Faber, Faber Castell. I think that's how you say their name. And it's a pit pen with a brush tip. And it is designed to be permanent. But a Sharpie, a fine point Sharpie, would work just as well. And the last one. Again, I don't know what this is going to look like. But nothing ventured. Nothing gained. Finding it a little difficult to see the edges of my stencil in this background. So I may have gone off the track a couple of times, but you know, again, I'm not going to let that bother me. I'm having fun, and that's all that really matters. Okay, let's do the reveal. Oh yes, yes. Much, much better. That's showing up much better. I'm really liking that. Now I'm wondering, should I go over on this one? And I think I will. If I can line that stencil back up, Actually, the beauty of this is it doesn't have to be exactly lined up because these really didn't show up that well. So that looks pretty good. So put it down, and I'm going to do the same thing. And I'm hoping that I'm going to get more detail. Oh, did I happen to mention that uh, art journaling using mixed media tends to be a fairly messy process, if you hadn't figured that out already, which is fun. It's like being a kid again, getting into a mess. And there's nothing wrong with that. You will wash. Of course, you might not want to be doing this in your Sunday best clothes. And you want to make sure your work area is well protected. I'm using actually a non-stick craft sheet, the Tim Holtz one, but there's others. And it wipes up really nice after you've done all of this. But if you're doing it on something that you really don't want to get any color on, like this is my craft bench, it's already a mess, that's okay then you might want to cover it well, first of all, with some newsprint, uh, clean newsprint, not newspaper, because newspaper will leave black marks. Okay, I think I've got her covered. All right, let's do the reveal. Oh yes, 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 yes. That's much better. Now you can really see the detail in there. Now, what do I want to do next? Well, next I want to take a white pencil. And I'm gonna come back once I find a decent white pencil. 
Okay, I found a white pencil, and I was looking actually for my Stiblo pencil because they're really good on top of uh, different mixed media uh, type foundations. But then I thought, well, wait, I am trying to stay as much as possible to the materials that are in your starter kit, and one of those is a white pencil crayon. So I thought I'd use a white pencil crayon. Now, I am no artist, but I've watched people highlight things using black and white pencils. And basically, I guess it's a determination as to where you think the light would be coming in on the uh, project. Now, if my light's coming down from this direction, across it, then the brighter parts are up here, and the darker parts are down on this opposite side. So what I'm going to try to do is, I'm going to take my water, this is a, a water-soluble watercolor pencil, and I'm just going to highlight these figures, first of all, and then I might add a little water to it, and we'll see. So since my light is coming in from this side, I'm going to just scribble a little white, get the dust particles off around this. And my idea here is to give it a little bit of a shadowing effect or a highlighting effect. And I don't know if this pencil is going to work. I'm not really liking this pencil. I'm going to try a different one. Um, I'm going to try, this is a Stabilo, Stabilo, I think that's how you say it, and I need to sharpen it. So give me a Okay, I've sharpened my pencil. I'm going to see what I can do here. Oh, just broke the lead on it. You want to know something? I don't think this is really working for me, so I'll be back in a second. Okay, I've gone to a watercolor crayon, a white one, and I tried this a little off camera a minute ago, and yes, I'm getting much more coverage here. So I'm just going to sort of outline around these figures where my light would be coming in. The crayon does work much better than the pencil. And that's fine. That's how you find these things out. It's all experimentation. I think at this point I can move my wax paper off the scene here. It's just getting in my way and I don't intend to put any more wet, really wet medium on here. So I'm just outlining around the edge of the black with the white just to make this stand out a little bit more. Again, I am no artist at all. I have no idea about shading and color effects or anything like that, but this makes me feel like an artist when I do this kind of stuff. Now, I put a fair amount over on the edges and I'm wondering, should I add a little bit of water? Let me see. I'll be back in a second. Okay, so I've gone around the where I think the light's coming in on the sides of each of these stamped images uh, that I used with the stencil with the white crayon. And now what I'm going to try to do is make that try to make that a little more subtle by adding a little water. I'm going to just take my water brush because these are water soluble crayons and get the flow going okay and just see what happens here oh that's kind of cool now I am kind of going over the black line so I think I'm gonna have to come back in once I'm finished this with the black marker but you see this is giving this sort of a, a halo effect and I'm kind of liking that it's also my whites not being pure white because it's picking up some of the color from one of the other layers a little bit down here but you want to know something I'm not going to worry about that now if it picks up too much I can just clean it off run a little water through to the tip
I'm just sort of giving a little bit of a feathering out as well so that the lines aren't quite as harsh oh geez listening to me it almost makes you makes me sound like I know what I'm doing got news for you I really don't know what I'm doing when it comes to the artistic part of all this I just go with the flow and that's another reason why I like art journaling because you know this is for me it's not for a gallery I'm not selling it to anybody I don't have to make any excuses for my lack of artistic knowledge I'm just going I think we all are born with a certain amount of creativity that we have and anybody who says they can't create they're full of crap we can all create you just have to have the guts that's all and realize that hey it's not going to be hanging in the Louvre but that doesn't matter it's for you okay I'm liking that I'm liking that a lot so I think what I need to do though is I'm gonna to have to hit it with the heat gun again cleaning off my water brush and when I come back I'm going to do another little experiment okay while I was off camera I decided to go over with my black marker again the outline of all the figures just to deepen it a little bit and because I lost a little bit of it when I put the white crayon watercolor crayon against the edges and when I dried it I also noticed something else the white sort of went back to white I said it was picking up uh, some of the color from the background and uh, it's kind of blended itself back into the background as well so it's not quite as heavy as before but it gives them a more subtle halo and then I got thinking well what if I add a little color to the dots that came from the texture stamp that I stamped inside the stencil and so that's what I've been doing I picked four colors here which are colors that I already have in my background the white blue a purple and a yellow and I just colored in randomly some of the dots on here with the crayons and I'm just finishing up on the figures here using the yellow I've already added the other colors and I'm really not thinking about where I'm putting this down I'm just wherever I see a spot that could use a little bit of color that's where I'm adding it Now, of course, I have to keep in mind that these are water soluble and I'm not adding any water to these. So anything, if I put anything that's wet over top of this when I'm done, then it, it is going to blend it. But I'm kind of thinking I'm done with adding any more water. But that just sort of makes it pop a little bit more, I think. So that's okay. That was a, an interesting little experiment. So I have another experiment I'm going to try and it involves another rubber stamp. This one with these flowers and this one's by, this one is by Hampton Art whoever they are I've had this for a while not even sure where I picked it up but it's an outline of various flowers and what I'm thinking is I'll ink these up in stays on or the jet black uh, archival ink and I'm going to apply one down here to the corner and I think I'm going to put another one up here on this side just partial one and then I'm going to use my watercolor pencils and I'm going to fill it in with a little bit of the same colors that I've been using throughout this so I've got my rubber stamp here let's get my ink and let's see what happens another wild experiment rub 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 tap 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 and I want to get a fair amount of ink on this because I really want it to stand out so I'm going to use just this part down here press good into this and let it sit for a minute so the ink can soak into the paper oh interesting it has a background it has a line around it hadn't really anticipated that but you want to know something that's okay now I'm just wondering do I leave one there and put one up here or I could put it down here now I'm gonna put it up at the top I don't know if that's going to make my balance go off, but oh well. What the heck? We'll see. And I 
think I'll use the smaller one. Okay, let it soak in. Okay, a little different. All right, so I've got that on here. So let's grab our pencil crayons. What do you want to start with? Let's start with the yellow and move our way into a shade of blue into maybe a little purple. Let's see what we get from this. Okay, so I'm going to start here and I'm just going to color. Now because there's so many layers of things on here, I don't know how well this is going to show up. But subtle isn't bad. Uh, now maybe we should do some variegation. Well, let's take the purple first of all. I'm just going to do a little purple. Now you could use your Copic or your Spectrum Noir markers for this kind of technique too, especially if you're good at doing the shading that those types of markers are famous for. I'm not so good with that, so I'm going to stick to the pencil crayons. And I'm going to blend another deeper color in on top of that. Now, I'm wondering what's going to happen. I'm going to add some, I'm going to try my water brush on these. See if I can blend these colors out a bit. I have no idea what's going to happen. Okay. Uh, let's take our water brush. Let's see what happens. Actually, I'm kind of liking this. This is where the detailed water brush would be better, but I'm just a little too lazy to go and find it. But this is working out not too bad. So I'm kind of pushing the color around from here. It's not bad at all. Let's clean off the water brush. Now, do a little yellow maybe. I'm not being particularly careful about staying in the lines because I am going to make this blend. So, okay, okay, what's another color? Maybe another shade of yellow, maybe a little, a little deeper yellow. Just doing it in between the petals. And I'm thinking, just scribble a little bit of color all the way around this little block that it created. brush and see what happens and actually I'm pulling the color out onto the background outside of that black line 
And actually, I'm pulling a little bit of the reddy pinky color as well out here. That's not too bad. It's just one little thing. I'm just wondering about that black line. Well, maybe an idea will come to me. So I'm not sure if I like that. Okay, I'm going to go over to this one, and I'm going to do that off camera. Okay, so I did a couple of things off camera. I finished coloring in this area up here and using the water brush, the same as I did down here. And then I thought my my the feet of my little figures here needed some grounding, and so I took some white uh, watercolor crayon again and just scribbled around here by their feet to make it look sort of like they're on ground and then I just blended it into the background the way I did the edges up here with the uh, water brush. Now I'm thinking that I need something along here and along the top here. So I looked at my stamp collection and I've come up with this funky little stamp right here, these little arrows. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to ink it up with stays on ink in blue, blue Hawaii as it's called, and just see what happens. Again, more experimentation. Might work out well, might not. Okay, so let's see here. Let it absorb in a little bit. That's not bad. It's subtle. It's subtle. But that's okay. I don't want the eye of the viewer to go right to the bottom first thing, so subtle is good. And we'll do the same up here. Yeah, I'm liking that. And now, at the risk of being, like, sort of creating a little bit of a frame here, so I'm wondering if, I think I'll put one down along this edge. Yeah, I like that, and I think I'll put one along this edge. And it's sort of, this is sort of building like a little frame around the two pages. It's kind of the technique I like to do with my backgrounds on my scrapbooking as well. Okay, I'm liking that. Now, I'm just wondering. The one thing that's bothering me a little bit is when I use that stamp with the flower, it came out as a square. It had that line around it. And I don't know. I can't erase it. I'm wondering what I should do with it. Maybe I should do... I'm thinking here maybe I should do sort of like a, a little bit of a border treatment or some kind of doodling around that. But now I'm wondering if I do that, is that going to take away from the center section of what's in here? Maybe best to just leave it alone. I'm also wondering if I should do some sort of very subtle little stamps. I like butterflies, and there was a butterfly right here. Okay, I'll be back. Okay, I found myself a butterfly stamp. I think it comes from the Tim Holtz collection, one of them. And I'm going to use the Stays On ink again, and this time in the Gothic Purple. And I just experimented by stamping one down right here, if you can see that. Here it is. And I think I'm going to stamp these randomly in some of the more open spaces just to break them up. Like up here. And maybe one down here. Up here. Okay, that's probably enough of those on there. Yeah, I think I'll stop while I'm ahead. Okay, what else could I do? Well, I could 
fill in these little arrows to make them stand out a little bit more. But like I said before, I don't want those to become a focal point. Um, this is the hard part about art journaling, is when to stop. When to know when to stop. Anyone know something? Although these black lines, but I'm afraid if I touch them, they're going to um, really, I'm going to do something that's going to make them stand out. But you know, I can't leave them that way. I'm going to try the white watercolor crayon again. And I'm going to try what I did the last time. I'm just going to go along the edge. And I'm going to let it blend in a little bit more. And I'm going to do the same up here. And we're going to see what happens when I put a little water to it. See if I can get it to blend. My water brush to run here. Okay, let's see. Ooh, I got that really soupy. Just trying to blend it out so it's not a harsh line. I mean, it's not going to cover up that black line completely. Maybe break it up a little bit. Okay, let's clean off the water brush. Let's add a little heat here to it. Move a few things away. You can't see it off camera here, but I got a counter behind me and it's loaded with everything we've been using today. Still going to see the black line because when this dries, it's becoming somewhat transparent. But I think it is breaking it up a little bit, so it's maybe not as harsh. Let's do the same up here. than I had on the last one. I'm wondering what will happen if I go kind of over that just a little bit. Blend it right out. Oops, covered my head on that one. Uh, I may want to go over that with a... Okay, let's just see. that a little bit more subtle. I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add a little right over top of this.
outside. Okay, it, it doesn't get rid of the black line that's there, but it makes it melt into the background a little bit more subtly. Okay, now, there's one thing before I forget that I need to do after that is grab my black marker, and right here I kind of went over the line, so I just put that back on. You know, I'm tempted to put something in the center of this flower and something in the center of that flower. Maybe one of these dots, do white dot, or maybe I'll do a little purpley dot. Let's see. I don't know if that did much. I'm leaving it. Okay, now I'm getting to the destructive, destructive point. So, what I'd like to do when I finish up a page, because we have so many different types of layers of things, some that are water soluble, some things that aren't, that are more permanent, I like to give the whole page a little bit of a heat set. That's what I'm doing right now. Okay, I've given it heat set, and now what I'd like to do, move a few things out of the way, and don't mind me for a minute, I just need to go down here to my supply list and find what's called fixative. This is fixative, comes in different brands. Uh, this is Grumbacher or something, but it also comes in Krylon. This is... Uh, a clear coating that you spray over your work and let it dry. Let it dry for about an hour. It's very fumy. I'll tell you that right now. So if you can do it outside, it might be a good idea to do it outside if you're really sensitive to smells. And you just lightly spray this over the top and it sets everything. So the stuff that's water soluble will now stay on the page and also will help to keep your pages from sticking together um, when you close up the journal. So just before I spray this on, I'm just going to let you have a little closer look here at what we've done. Take the glare off. Oops. Let me move my water bucket. So just to look all the way around. Remember, we started with the basic items that are in the starter kit. The only things I really added here that aren't in the starter kit are some rubber stamps and some stencils. Those are your friends. And... Voila, I'm done. I'm kind of happy with the way this looks. Um, I don't know, maybe you don't like it, but let's give it a little shot of this, shall we? And good thing we don't have smell-o-vision because this stuff's really smelly, but it's gonna keep everything nice and pristine. So, there you go. From start to finish, an art journal page using mixed media. It was fun, and you can have a lot of fun with this. I also find it very, very relaxing. There's no pressure whatsoever. So I hope you decide to um, take more of our classes with this, and we'll see you next time.